Best thing about golf is when you find your swing after you lose it. Okay. The worst thing about golf is losing your swing. What up, world? I'm Jock Slade, and welcome to a new episode of Voices. In the world of golf, we see people from all walks of life. And today, we're stepping into the world of hip-hop with Grammy Award-winning artist Macklemore. While many may know him for popping tags, lately, he's been a bogey boy to the core. We caught up with Macklemore to chop it up on the range and on the course. I got into golf. You know, I definitely had a period of when Tiger first came out. Fast forward to three years ago. It was the day after Thanksgiving on vacation with my, with my family and uh, my best friend and I got drug out to the golf course the day after Thanksgiving. I ended up in a fairway bunker, grabbed the five iron and, um, and I hit it right in the middle of this thing called the club face and got that feeling. And I was just like, what was that? I want that again. And I've been searching for that club face ever since. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. But um, yeah, it was just that, it was that moment of just like pure addiction, that dopamine hit of something about a golf ball hit squarely that I fell in love with instantly. And um, the rest is history. That was like, you know, three, three and some change years ago. Macklemore now. Grammy Award winning artist, we all know. That's pretty good for someone who hasn't been playing that long. So while golf and hip hop aren't really used in the same sentence very often, they're really more alike than we'd like to admit, especially when it comes to the relationship between a caddy and a golfer and a producer and an artist. Yeah, it's interesting because when things go, don't go well on the golf course, um, you know, you blame the caddy. Right. When the record doesn't go well, you blame the producer. It's the exact same thing. <laughs> exact same thing. <laughs> but yeah, I do think that I think that that's an interesting correlation. I mean, the truth is, I've worked with producers my whole life. I've had a caddy like five times. Oh, oh okay, okay. Um, but I will say there is there is a trust. You know, like when you're in the booth and you lose perspective and you're like, yo, you know, where should I take this? Where do I go? There's the same thing on the golf course with the caddy. Truth be told, it's more than just the caddy and the producer. The individual pursuit on the course and on the mic are pretty much the same. Has like that, like that individual pursuit that kind of, that golf gives you, has that affected like the music in any way? Has it like changed the way you looked at music or approach your music or anything like that? I think for me, like, you know, particularly within the hip hop industry, like there's this, there's this thing that's like, keep going, keep putting out music. You gotta stay on top of it. You know, you gotta stay relevant. You gotta keep pressing, like, and I just don't subscribe to that. Like, I subscribe to mental health and, and being happy. And um, for me, when I'm like so busy that I can't make time for, you know, my family or my recovery or, or golf, like, I need to have, you know, I suffer. And I need to have a holistic, like, healthy, balance to my life. Do you think that you can be the hip hop artist and be the avid golfer that you are now? Are those are those two worlds at war at all? I, you know, golf is a long game. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long game. It takes it takes hours getting back out on the road this summer. I'm excited because that was before COVID kind of shut touring down. Like that was a great European summer run. You know, I was waking up early every day, finding the golf course the night before. All right, you know, we're in Budapest. We got to drive an hour to this golf course, you know, see how many holes we can get in before we have to get back. And um, so, yeah, there's seasons of, of golf where I feel like I'm really in it. And then there's times like the last, you know, month or two where I'm like, all right, I'm gonna buckle down and finish this thing. As golfers, we're always Chasing, chasing something. something. What is? What are you? What are you chasing in golf? I would love to get down to a single-digit handicap. I've I've been close, but it takes like you know, it takes that 
that time and that practice. Like the bigger picture of what I'm chasing is just to feel comfortable with like, you know what? Today might not be the day, but like tomorrow, tomorrow could be. I, I feel like that's a hard thing to do, like especially as a, as a rapper, it's so competitive. Like you want to be competitive with yourself. Is, is it hard to, to, to give yourself that, that like mental space? Oh yeah, completely. I mean, I don't know if it's like, if it's a rap thing or what, but yeah, I want to be great. You know, then there's moments of greatness and you're like, ah, I figured it out. And the minute that you have that internal, I figured it out, it's gone. Look, playing the game is one thing, but in the current generation, being able to show your own individual personality is a part of the game as well. For a world famous rapper, you'd think he wouldn't have a problem being himself, but I'd wager to say, you'd be wrong. Bogey Boys, it's a, it's a vibe. What's the message of Bogey Boys? To me, the message is be yourself. Inclusivity, you know, growing the game, being an individual, standing out a little bit, getting outside your comfort zone, and most importantly, having a good time on the golf course. This is my favorite game that I've ever played. I want people to feel comfortable, feel welcome, feel like they can come out, at the very least, look good, even if they're not playing good. Like, I feel like you've made your, your impact on the world of hip hop. And like you're coming into golf, yeah. you know, one as a player, but also as somebody that is looking to, to change the sport in a way. Like what's, what's the impact you want to have? I want to diversify the game and what we know as, what we've seen forever as this is what golf looks like. And people of all economic backgrounds, people that aren't white, men. Um, <laughs> I think that this is an opportunity right now that we're in that golf is growing. You know, if there was one takeaway, positive takeaway from COVID, it's that more people started to play golf. There is a moment happening right now where people are like getting out, whether it's top golf or the driving range or just trying it because it's the only sport that we could play during COVID, where people are experimenting, going out, realizing that there is an amazing feeling hitting a golf ball. Macklemore, he likes to play some of the munis up in Seattle. It's all Golf Digest, that's where sort of all walks of life converge. It's great for the game. What do you think golf is gonna look like in 20 years? Or five years, let's say five years. How do you think golf is changing? I think who you are going to see on the golf course is going to, is going to change. They tried to count me out, I'm gonna bounce back though. But School Boy Q, if I would have told you back in 2012, you two are recording White Walls together on the album The Heist. If I told you in 2022, you two would be playing side by side right here at Pebble Beach, what would you have said? You lying and get away from me, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I wasn't thinking about golf at that time and now we here, bro, you know what I mean? Coming from where I'm coming from, the life that I had, I never thought about playing golf and I got into it and it changed my mental. It, 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 it let me learn myself as a person. Like this is why certain things in my life is going bad or certain things are going good because of the attitude thing. You get what I'm saying? And it yeah. fixed my attitude in life. It fixed a whole lot of things about me in life. Because yeah. I mean, life is golf game, is a golf game. You know what I mean? Some good shots, some bad shots, but most importantly, keep going because you never know. Don't give up because you're in the sand on your fourth shot. You might chip That's it right. in. That's right. You get what I'm saying? Right when you give up, you chip it in and then you left your par there. You know what I mean? So it just taught me a lot about life, you feel me? I mean, life lessons from two of the greats. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're evolving as a society. We're becoming a more diverse world and country. And um, now is an opportunity for the way that golf culture shifts. Yeah. And, you know, it takes time. It takes like, there is, there's boards of country clubs that like don't want to let people in and that you know you have to know five people in order to get accepted to the country. Like, I don't know five people at this country club. Right. You know? And I can figure it out, but a lot of people can't figure out that, you know? Yeah. And um, so I think that now is an opportunity where if we really want to see a change in five years, we need to put in actual work to like make this more of an inclusive sport that people can can enjoy it. You play golf, you know what it means to chase that perfect shot. From Macklemore 
The addiction has actually helped him to settle his nerves and escape from the life that comes along with being a worldwide superstar. How has golf changed you? Golf has made me weirdly a more obsessive person. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. But a, but a more patient person. Mm -hmm. I think that there is an opportunity. Like, whenever my kids are wild, I'm like, if I don't react to this, if I can take a breath, then I can actually have an opportunity to grow. Now, does that happen often? No. Usually I react to it and I'm like, ah, what's going on? You know? yeah. But there's something about golf where it's the same thing. You're tested, your patience is tested all the time. And it's just that thing of like, you know what? All I got right now is the ability to breathe, relax, and move on to the next one. And there is like the endless metaphor, the life parallel of I just got what's in front of me. I can't get back that. I don't know what's gonna come next. There's gonna be good breaks, bad breaks, good lies, bad ones. Um, but I'm, I'm lucky I get to live it. You've heard it before. Better access and a more equitable playing field for those without the means. You want someone to be able to be themselves, no matter where they're from, what they look like, or how they dress. For someone like Macklemore, that's not only rooted in his game, but it's rooted in who he is. I want to give him a big shout out for coming on the show. I'm Jacques Slade. Thank you for joining us on Voices, and I'll see you next time. Peace.